So today's idea, today's big topic is that we're going to talk about an important aspect of SEO for your website, uh, which is that the search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo, they uh, rank your site better when your site uh, is updated, when it's fresh. So if you and your competitor both create a site at the same time, but you update yours more often than your competitor and someone searches your keywords, you might appear uh, higher up than your competitor if you update on a regular basis. So the best way to update is through blogging. So that's what our topic is going to be today. Uh, what is blogging and, and, and advice and so forth and then an assignment. So the best thing I would I think would be to show you examples first. So if you want to look at these, if you want to open a web browser, it's better to see what I'm talking about and then explain it, but you've probably already heard of blogs, seen blogs, and that sort of thing. We'll talk about some nuances, but here's, here's a, a few that I can show you. We can go over to my company's website. So on your web browser, go to pmdinteractive.com. pmdinteractive.com, one word. And then at the uh, top nav bar, there's a blog link. Go ahead and click the blog link. So blogs are basically articles, you could say. Um, WordPress calls them posts. So my company here, under the blog section, We've got this blog post about our top WordPress plugins, part one. Before that, there was a post or an article about a guide to choosing a good password. Before that, there's a one about Google and one about Twitter and, and so forth. So these are blog posts, and you can click on it to read more. Like if you click on that WordPress blog, it goes in and it gives you more in detail. Um, you get a little preview of it and then you can read it. So it's an article on a topic related to your company. So that one was published uh, May, uh, March 14th. So if you set yourself a goal of one blog post per month of at least a hundred words, that's a great goal for you for your website to get more uh, traffic in the long term because as I said if you created your site you haven't really changed it you've added already all your products and content how much more can you change it well you're not really going to add new add more products or change the about page or change the home page every once in a while you're gonna add content you're gonna add meaningful content and that's what a blog uh, that's what a blog section of the site is you're gonna add uh, articles later on we'll brainstorm each of you uh, will I'll brainstorm with each of you about ideas of what to blog about because yes every company every website could have a blog and really nowadays should have a blog even if you don't think you would need one because it will help your SEO so for example this blog post here this is about WordPress plugins my company we make websites we do a bunch of things Websites, the main way we do them is WordPress. So we're writing on a topic related to the business that we have. This is a useful thing. It's free. You can, of course, charge for your blog posts if you'd like. But this is free. Uh, so when, when people are searching on Google, you know, free, free WordPress plugins or best WordPress plugins or top WordPress plugins, that could make my site appear here because this is something that people are searching for. Notice it's more than 100 words. I forget how long this is, but it may be two or 300 words. Divided into sections for readable chunks. It's not just one long essay. It's subtly easier to read in that there's sections. There's a little section for this plugin called Duplicator. There's one for, one for a plugin called Redirection and another one called Jetpack. And then at the end, the takeaway. So my advice here is the blogs that I'm going to show you, they follow good practices of blogging. One of them is you can write as much as you want, no problem. But the problem comes with people having the will to really read it. 
one way to entice people to read completely your blog is to divide it up. And that's simply right here, like this bolder text, that's just an H1 tag. In WordPress, remember, we can set paragraphs, we can set headings, we can set some basic style, and simply adding H1 tag or H2 or however you want to divide it. That breaks up the wall of text and it allows people to maybe just jump to a certain chunk and read and digest that piece or to show that they can just follow it sequentially and you know read the whole post so headings I recommend use headings when you're writing your blog posts the topic is very open-ended and so open-ended that you might think well, I don't know what to write about that's what we're gonna talk about later with each of you what possibly could you write about you want to break up the monotony of text also with a picture or two. So here I just got the, the WordPress logo, the official WordPress logo. Uh, I could have set it up also so that I put it on the left side of the paragraph or a, an icon for that plugin or, or whatever. But simply a picture also helps in blog posts, at least one. Notice I've got some links that point over to other websites. Uh, so at the very beginning, there's a. it starts off with WordPress is a very popular site building platform. By one measure, it makes up nearly one quarter of all sites on the web. And that's an active link over to this guy's website over here. The point of this is that this is a link to another blog. And this uh, is very useful for your blog to have links to other blogs because most likely that other website has some mechanism that they get a notification that your site linked to their site. And the point of that is once they're aware of that, they might check out your site, they might drive a little bit of traffic to your site simply by going to your site to read what you're about. Even better, they might see that your site, your blog, has great content that they might care about and they might link back to your site. So to get good SEO nowadays, uh, you want that. You want sites, other people's sites, linking to your site. In the old days, the trick was, well, I can buy five websites. Victor's Bakery and, you know, Victor's Dog Walking and Victor's Tutoring.com and all of that. And I would have them all linked to each other. And in the old days, that would work because the search engines were only smart enough to really tell these sites are linking to each other, therefore they are relevant. But nowadays, they're smart enough to know, actually, well, these sites don't even relate. Why is this dog walking site linking to this web design site? Why is this bakery site linking to that dog walking site? So nowadays, it's not a good idea. If you have 20 different sites and linking to each other, that's not going to help your SEO juice anymore. You really want other sites that link that you don't control that are related to what you're about linking to your site. So that's an example right there. Just a simple link in the blog post linking over to some other site about websites and technology and so forth. And they're not in under any obligation to link back to my site. But this is enticing them perhaps to link back to my site and that's what I want ultimately. Links back to my site because of my blog. So I've got a few links in here. I've got some relevant content that we wrote ourselves, proper grammar and, and written well with a picture divided up into sections with H tags, H1, H2, H3 as necessary. So it's basically a blog post there. The topic, as long as it relates to your site, it's good. And as I said, 100 words minimum. You'll be surprised that you'll get to that limit pretty fast. And then also, as a goal, once a month. The more you blog, the more blog posts you put out there, the better, because there's more content going out to Google, more content going out to Bing, so that you can get found. Um, and I think I mentioned it in WordPress. Remind me if I didn't, but I talked about in WordPress that you can schedule posts, right? Uh, if I didn't, we'll look at it again. But yeah, you can schedule posts in WordPress. So that means you can spend one day writing five 100 word blogs and schedule them that one will appear this month one will appear next month and one will appear the following month so you don't have to be 
chained to your computer thinking about what to write every time at the end of the month. You could write, you know, 500 words in total and break it up to display those 100 words every month. And there you go, you're publishing content on a regular basis. So I'm going to go back and I'll look at the other blog post over here. A guide to choosing a good password. This blog post is a little bit different in that the text is a little shorter, but the focus is this free PDF. So this PDF that we designed in PowerPoint is just a, a little 10-page um, kind of handout on creating a good password. Uh, you know, people's accounts are getting hacked all the time. How do you protect against that? Here's a free PDF, a how-to guide that helps you create a um, a password. So there's a there's a short part of the um, of the post itself again divided up with headings and then the important part there's some bullet points and the important part is the PDF you click on that and then you have this PDF that walks you step by step free to download and so forth so the point of the blog not just to blog for blogging's sake to blog for SEO because that could get you links to your site that could get you traffic to your site you are creating content that people might like and care about and share. Have you noticed at the end of these blog posts, there's a spot here, share. Share it on your Facebook, share it on Twitter, Google+. We've got more here so people can print it or people can uh, email it or whatever. So you want to create good content to entice people to share it because then you're getting free advertising. You're getting people on their Facebook or their Twitter to spread your message. So as long as you've got good content, it's going to be like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you will get more traffic because people will share it, and those shares will get you more traffic. Notice also these blog posts at the end have a related section you've probably seen that you've read an article about you know top 10 celebrity fails and then at the end there's another one about top 12 celebrity um, so opposite of fail uh, successes so you're gonna see all these blog posts one's gonna entice you like I I'm so addicted to watching those BuzzFeed videos about you know people try Japanese snacks for the first time or people try uh, you know, Mortal Kombat for the first time. And I watch one and I watch the next one and the next one and suddenly half an hour later I've watched a bunch of videos. Same thing with blogging, probably. You've probably seen articles that you, you read it, you liked it, and then it entices you at the end. That one seems interesting, let me click and read it. So WordPress gives you the ability to do this. You write a blog post, you write a few of them, and then they're going to be linking to each other so people can be enticed to read more. The point of that is Again, what's the point of my website? Going back to my assignment about the company profile marketing strategy, the point of my website, PMD Interactive, is I want people to go there to see my company's portfolio of work and to hire us. I want them to, I want the customer to see that we know what we're talking about, we're giving good advice, we practice what we preach, they read our blog post, they get a good tip, they read another one, and then they might think, okay, we'll hire them, or maybe at least contact them to see if we want to hire them. So we have related when you have related blog posts that captures people on your site longer to hopefully complete the goal of your site. I'm trying to sell my paintings. I'm trying to book a gig for my band. I'm trying to get together a flash mob. I'm trying to uh, get donations. And if I've got a blog about the successes that we've had in our company to entice people to donate, if I've got more articles about all of the good we've done, then that might entice people, yeah, I want to give them a donation, $5, $5 a month, $10, whatever. So related content. And then there's also the ability to comment. That's useful because then that gets people interacting with your site and the search engines see that and they say this site is pretty relevant. People are commenting, people are sharing, let's rank them higher than the other company that's doing the same thing but doesn't have this activity. 
And remember, WordPress, we can activate that really easily, and we can set it up to moderate so that not just any crazy person writes something, that we have to click a button that says approve or deny the post. So those are examples on our site of blog posts. I'll show you a few more in a moment, but any questions so far? So again, one of the great things about WordPress is it lets you do this stuff pretty easily. Let me show you this client over here. Akiastexcoco.com, Mexican food restaurant. I've mentioned them before. The main purpose of the site here, order online or book a table. You can't eat the food on the website, but you can order it online or book a table. Well, this is not just any Mexican food restaurant. They've got unique food from the Texcoco region of Mexico. It's near Mexico City. It's... Uh, it's not nachos and so forth. So over on the on the blog page, the blog here is for a couple of purposes. One is to educate people on the food uh, or beverages. So raise your hand if you've ever heard of something called pulque. Nope. Pulque is a beverage, an alcoholic beverage made by made from the maguey plant. If you if you know anything about spirits, the maguey plant is related, and it looks like the agave plant. What does the agave plant graduate into? Tequila. So uh, the maguey plant graduates into pulque, which is an alcoholic beverage sold at the restaurant here. You never knew that? There's an article about that that educates you about what is served at the restaurant. So that also has text, pictures, links, uh, related articles, the ability to share. You know, you start to mention alcohol and people really like that. And so, related articles and so forth. So the, the thing about this uh, blog on this site is uh, educating people uh, on the food. There's lots of articles so we can go back. So about the craft beer, about the uh, barbecue lamb, about the beverages like uh, uh, Agua de Jamaica, and so forth. This food here, michotes. So, you might have had quesadillas, but have you ever had a huitlacoche quesadilla? I don't even know what that is. Well, read the article. That This is how Texcoco uses blogging to educate, but also to, to toot our own horn. There's a few blog posts here about celebrities that have come to the restaurant because popularity breeds popularity. If someone sees, oh, look at that, Rick Bailey's was, was at the restaurant. Oh, and look at that, uh, Andrew Zimmern was at the restaurant, and, and Marcella Valladolid too, and you know, people see celebrities have come to the restaurant, that'll entice people to come to the restaurant too. So educating people on the food, just showing off a little bit. Also here, uh, for example, they expanded to Los Angeles, so there's a blog post about that. Uh, you might not have. Technically, they're in Commerce, which is right near San, uh, right near Los Angeles, just like you know Chula Vista is near San Diego. But uh, City of Commerce, a little bit about it, and and then how does that relate to uh, the restaurant? Well, uh, rest, uh, Texcoco started in Tijuana from recipes from Texcoco, came to San Diego, now expanded to Los Angeles to bring authentic Mexican cuisine, and so forth. So. That's how this company, uh, a Mexican food restaurant, uses, uses blogging. And again, this follows the, the various conventions or tips and so forth, which are links, pictures, dividing it into sections, uh, proper grammar, and you know, written professionally, the ability to share, uh, related content, the ability to comment, which now that I see this, for some reason this doesn't have the comment option turned on. Oops, got to turn that back on. Um, and um, yeah, for some reason we forgot to turn that on. Oops, well that's easily fixed. 
right, so see, so that's how that company uses uh, blogging to help the SEO. Uh, I'll show you one more. My own blog, my personal blog, just of my hobbies, is over at vmcampos.com slash blog. You can check that out. Same sort of thing, just more examples of blogs. And I'm sure you've seen these before, so maybe you never really paid attention to what they were, but you've seen them. You've seen these articles. They're blog posts. WordPress gives you the ability to do that. We'll review briefly some important blog features of your site. We, we did it a while ago, but I'll re remind you of a couple of them. And then we'll have the, um, the homework. But if we take a quick look at my blog over here, vmcompass.com slash blog, here it's about comic books, my, one of my hobbies, Comic Con, and so forth. So on these blog posts, they're a little bit more focused on video. So uh, I do a series called Cool Comic Book Covers. So that blog post there, posted January 11th, a little bit of text, and then the actual video embedded right in the blog post. So it doesn't have to be limited to just text. It can have pictures, it can have video, it can have sound. WordPress lets you embed all that stuff. So you can watch the video. Sorry, you've probably heard of YouTube before. Vimeo is an alternative to YouTube. So I've got some videos over there. And then the blog, then the video is embedded in, in my blog post. So from the main site here, I look at a few articles and then I can go back. Older posts. And they're kind of the same sort of thing. So it's got the ability to share to comment, related articles, and the, 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 the subject, the, the content, what you want to write about is up to you depending on your, on your site. So uh, we'll take a short break in just a moment. And what I'm going to do then is give you a link to a, uh, a communal document where we're going to all contribute to, uh, and then the homework and, and so forth. But I, I've shown you here examples of some blogs, some ideas. Um, I would say to kind of get inspiration, uh, remember to check them out. So there's the PMD Interactive uh, blog that we have. Uh, there's the Texcoco blog and my own blog site. Uh, so any general questions at this point? Alright, let's uh, take a short break. When we come back uh, you might think, well, I don't, I don't know what to write about. How can my company really have a blog? So after the break, uh, we're going to do a little brainstorming activity so that we can uh, all uh, think about what to write about in our blogs. You might already have an idea, but it's always good to get more ideas. So it's about 6 o'clock. Let's take a 10-minute break. Uh, at 6.10, we'll start the next part of the assignment.